Revelation 1136. From the 14th of October 1939. Spiritual Knowledge, Summary. Task of the Teaching Beings. Spiritual knowledge includes the most unthinkable summaries, and a person who has been trained in such knowledge is never exceptionally active intellectually. His only task is to frequently listen inward, and so their results are thus received in the heart and are also to be imparted by the heart. The mind now processes what is received from the heart and does well not to want to make its own improvements of what is clearly offered to it. Simply, plainly and understandably, the Spirit of God expresses Himself in man, and just therefore the received divine word can outlast times and find entrance everywhere. Human thinking sometimes changes, but the feeling of the heart will remain eternally the same, if the will in the human being demands truth and divine wisdom. If now such an extraordinary knowledge is imparted to a human being, then this does not happen only because of this one human being, but this is only the mouth through which the Lord speaks to his creatures. He only makes use of it in order not to dispute man's freedom of faith, but always only conveys his word, the expressions of his will, through the mouth of man. And this word cannot be conveyed in a limited extent, because everything measured, meager or limited, could not be called divine. God's word is without end, just as his power and might will never find an end. And therefore the earthly child only needs to want to receive, then the word goes to him unlimitedly and therefore through the word, also the knowledge. And therefore the knowledge must extend over all areas, and no end can be set for it by God. As long as man himself does not set an end to this receiving by his will. The teaching activity of the beings on the other side is therefore likewise a never ending task, which means, however, for the teaching being a distinction, because it is an indirect receiving and passing on of divine power, which is unbelievably beatifying for this teaching being and therefore remains in a state of bliss, as long as the giving and the receiving part remains in contact. Because inevitably, everything what goes out from God, what God gives, must cause a feeling of bliss for the being who receives it. And understandably all knowledge must also have a blissful effect, for the right thinking person will always want to use this knowledge to instruct the ignorant, he will likewise want to distribute what he has received, and giving will be a blissful state for him. He has received wisdom and has thus become a bearer of power and as such a receiving and giving and thus an instrument of God, who serves him without ceasing. Amen.